Hey friends, welcome. We have an amazing service just for you today. And you know what? We believe that God's gonna move in your life. So get ready, this is One Billion. OneBillion.org exists to give one billion people an opportunity to know Jesus. Our goal is to share Christ in every country around the world. You are welcome to join the movement that is touching the world. Let's reach the world together. Hey friends, we are so thankful for you today. You know, here at One Billion, we exist to reach people all over the world on mobile phones, and we share the gospel with thousands every day. And we're so thankful for you, and, and we're so excited for you to be a part of this movement. Well, today I have a friend of mine, Pastor Andrew, and he has got an amazing message prepared just for you today. And this series he's starting is called The Seven Weeks to Becoming the Person that God Wants You to Be. Today's message is titled, Don't Lose Your First Love. So get ready, this is the Bible. I used to be sad, but now after accepting Jesus Christ, I have peace, joy, and love. Jesus came to die on a cross just to give me a brand new start. Now he is with me and I am not alone. I want everyone to know God. He changed my life. He can change yours too. Jesus loves you. All right, welcome to our first transformation campaign. So these next seven weeks, we're gonna be talking about how to become the person God wants you to be. And we're actually gonna be studying from a book that most people don't wanna read because they're so scared of it, and that's the book of Revelation. But you know, Revelation isn't a closed book. It's not one that we can't understand. It's actually an open revelation about Jesus Christ. So we should read every book of the Bible. <clears throat> so for the next seven weeks, we're gonna talk about one of these seven churches in Revelations two through three. And uh, I wanna give you a little bit of a background on this book before we begin. So this book was written by the Apostle John. This is the John that followed Jesus everywhere. Uh, when he writes this, he's about 90 years old and he's been exiled to this little tiny island called Patmos in the Aegean Sea. And he was actually ministering at the church of Ephesus. <clears throat> and so for the next seven weeks, John is actually gonna be taking through this vision by God showing him uh, what's to happen to these seven churches. But even though this is a vision for the future, these are the seven types of churches that we have today. And God is going to instruct us through that. So for the next seven weeks, we're gonna pick apart one of those churches. And our format, our basic format for this is the first part of, of the letter from Jesus to the church through John is a revelation of who God is and then the next thing that he's gonna talk about are the good aspects of that church, what that church is actually doing well. And then God is going to give a correction to that church, and that's for most of the churches. There's two churches where God actually doesn't have a correction for them. So you can see five out of the seven need to be corrected. And so for us, there's things that we can improve on. The next thing uh, after he talks about the good and the bad is an invitation. And that's what we want to do today. We want to be invited into the fullness of who Jesus is. So this, this transformation campaign is going to teach us a couple of things. Number one, who God is. That's the number one thing. And that's the reason why we read the Bible. We want to know God. It's not self-discovery. It's not so we can look inward and try to find ourselves. It's so we can know God. That's the whole purpose of this walk. So we're going to go ahead and start with the first church, the church of Ephesus. Now, the church of Ephesus was like the biggest and best church ever. They were, the church was started, actually talks in the book of Acts about Priscilla and Aquila starting this church. And if you don't know about who they are, you can go into the book of Acts and read it. But basically, these were two pioneers that were very, very powerful, and they were like good preachers. And then that was followed up by Apollos. So Apollos was like this, this other pastor that came through the church of Ephesus and just gave so much wisdom. After that, Paul himself, who wrote two thirds of the New Testament, was a preacher there at Ephesus. 
And then we had another preacher, I forgot the name, and then John came in and he preached at this church. So out of all of the churches in Asia Minor, Ephesus was like the most powerful and steady church. It's like, can you imagine the Apostle Paul coming to this church and teaching us for three years on how to follow Christ? This would be a really powerful church. But the lesson we're gonna learn here is even the most powerful church has things that they can change. They have ways that they can grow, just like I can grow and just like you can grow. So I'm excited for us to learn uh, from the church of Ephesus, learn from what they did great and learn from what they could do better. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and read from Revelations chapter two, verses one through seven. It says this, to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the golden lampstands. So we start here and what's happening is John or Jesus is giving a message to the angel who's basically the pastor of this church. And Jesus is introducing himself as the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand. What are the seven stars? Those are the angels of these seven churches. And then he goes on to reveal a characteristic of who he is to this church in Ephesus. And you know, when God reveals himself to you, he shows the part of himself that you need the most. He says he introduces himself as the one who walks among the golden lampstands. What are the lampstands in Revelation? It represents the churches. So God here is saying, I'm the one that walks among you. I'm the one who wants to be with you. Remember in the garden, God walked with man in the cool of the day. That's still God's desire. He wants to walk with us. He wants to have that sweet fellowship. <clears throat> you know, many of us get busy and we forget to just walk with God, but God wants to walk with you. And this is the good. So first we see God revealing who he is and now he's gonna talk about the good things that the church of Ephesus did. And these are things that we can listen to as well. He says, I know your deeds. See, God knows everything that you do. You don't have to go around and tell everybody. <laughs> I know your hard work and your perseverance. And I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people that you have tested and that claim to be apostles but are not. You see, in the church of Ephesus, just like any other church or in anybody's life, there's gonna be false doctrine that tries to come and infiltrate it. It's like the leaven in the bread, right? We hear about that in the Bible. So what he's saying here is, is false teachers tried to get into the church. But one of the amazing things that this church did was they didn't stand for false teaching. And that's the sign of a strong church. They're able to have a sense of discernment on what, what's God and what's not. So how do we know? The big question becomes, how do we know if something is from God or not? How do we know if there's a false teacher or a false apostle or someone trying to steer us the wrong way? Well, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, it says this, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but tr test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. So if you want to know whether someone's true or false or whether they're real, ask about Jesus. Ask what they believe about Jesus. That's going to tell you everything you need to know. You know, <clears throat> every other religion in the world has a false uh, belief about who Jesus is, right? So you think of uh, any religion, Islam, they think Jesus was a prophet. You look at other religions and they say, oh, Jesus was a good man, but he wasn't God. So if anyone comes among you and says, you know, Jesus isn't the son of God, or Jesus didn't walk the earth, or Jesus wasn't crucified, that's a false prophet if they try to give you a message. So he, this church was very aware and discerning about who was speaking and who was teaching. So we shouldn't stand for false doctrine. That's one of the things that they did. In fact, you know, uh, when you get sick and you have to throw up, what your body is doing is it's taking all of that poison and it's getting it out of your system. In the same way, this church, uh, a healthy body couldn't have poison and it had to get the poison out. And so that was one of the things of many that they did right. You know, it says that he saw their deeds, he saw their hard work, he saw all the things that they were doing right. You know, this was that power church with all the power teachers. <clears throat> but then 
he has to acknowledge the thing that they can change. And this is the why we call this a transformation campaign, is because by the end of the seven weeks, I want you to be more like the person God wants you to be. I want you to look more like Jesus than ever before. I want you to become more loving. And so this is so fitting for the first church in Ephesus because the thing that he's going to combat is the thing that a lot of us can forget. And so this is what the Bible says in verse 4 of Revelation 2. Yet I hold this against you. It's like, hold on to your seats. <laughs> you, but it's cool because God, you know, the funny thing about this is God actually said all the good things first before he makes a correction. That's God's character. He doesn't just want to bash you down. He wants to teach you. He wants to grow you. He says, yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. You have forsaken the love you had at first. You know, when, when we become new Christians, we have like this honeymoon with God, right? I don't know if you can, you can uh, relate to that, but it's like the moment you first came to Jesus, like your heart was so alive and the only thing you wanted was more Jesus. But over time, distractions from the world and other things take that first spot. And over time, if we're not careful, like in the last uh, teaching series we did, we can drift away from God. We can disconnect from God over time. <clears throat> and so what he's saying here is you have lost your first love. And so the lesson that I want to share with you this week, and one of the reminders that I want to give us as we walk this path together, me and you together, um, is we can't replace our plain fellowship with God for works and striving. We just can't do it. You know, God doesn't need all of our heavy lifting. <laughs> That's why he did the heavy lifting for us. Jesus died on a cross to give us salvation. And you know what happens is it's like you're at a restaurant or something like that and someone pays the bill and you try to pay it again. It doesn't make any sense. Jesus already footed the bill. He did the heavy lifting for us. So the beautiful thing is now we can have relationship. We're back in right relationship with God. So what I want you to do this week is I want you to do what he's asking us to do. And we're going to walk into this invitation together. So like I said before, he introduces himself. God says, you know, I'm the one that walks among you. He wanted to remind them of this revelation that he is the God that cares about us. And he's the God that loves to be with us. And then he starts talking about, hey, your good deeds are awesome. You're working hard, you're persevering, you're doing all this stuff, but you forgot the first love. And that's what's most important, you know? When Jesus summed up, Jesus doesn't like to make things complicated. He always makes it simpler. He took all of the laws, he took the whole Bible. He said, I can sum up the whole Bible in two commands. Two commands, literally one sentence. He's like, love God and love others. God simplified all the law <clears throat> into those two things. And so what God is saying to us here is not to uh, prioritize other things above loving God and loving others. So we can't lose that first love. So what is God's invitation for us today? Well, he tells us very plainly. He said, you have forsaken the love at first. And so he gives us three things that we can do. This is the first one. Consider how far you've fallen. So he's, he's basically saying, take inventory. You know, think about it. Like think about where you were at first and think about where you are now. And that's the first step. You have to first acknowledge. You have to acknowledge, hey, look, I've backslidden. I've fallen away. But there's good news. You can do something about it. And that's the second step, which is repent. You know, repent is not a dirty word. Repent is not, you know, like people holding signs and screaming at you at the beach. <laughs> that's like what you think about, like these people that scream at you, like turn or burn or you fry and die. But repent is literally just to change your mind. It's just to change your course. And that's what you can do today. And how do we do that? See, God is so practical in his teaching. It says, and do the things you did at first. Do the things you did at first. <clears throat> so let's talk about four ways, four practical ways this week that you can return to God. How you can return to that first love. The first step is to recount your blessings. Recount your blessings. Now, one of the ways that you can grow in your love for God is literally just to sit there and think about all that God has done for you. Literally, just get out a piece of paper and just write down a list of all the things that God has done in your life from start to finish. You could take as long as you want, but the first way to return to God, to return to that first love, is to recount your blessings. The second way that you can do this is to recall his character. Recall his character. 
uh, I was working at a, a missions organization and there was a lady there during worship time. She would always get up and say, you know what guys, let's just, let's just tell God who he is. Let's just publicly declare during worship who God is. And people all around the room would start to say something different like, God, you're faithful. God, you're loving. God, you're the God of amazing surprises. God, you have good plans in store. You're my savior. You're my protector. And by the end of worship, it was just like a giant love fest. We were all just like in love with God again. And why, why did that happen? Because we remembered who God is. We recalled his character. And that's something that you can do as well. You can recall his character. You know, during the day, if something hard comes against you, you can recall his character. God, I know you're in control. God, I know you're going to take care of this. God, you're faithful. When, you know, a bill comes and you don't know how you're going to pay for it. God, you have this under control. You are my provider. You see how doing this can actually help? The third way that we can reconnect and return to that first love is to reveal my heart. It's to reveal my heart. There's nothing that's going to get you connected faster to God. And I'll tell you this, I want you to listen. This is the one thing that I want you to do this week, to be honest. If you, if you say, okay, the other three, just put them on the side, but take this one. This one is the most important. You just open your heart, you reveal your heart as genuinely to God as you can. You do it. You say, God, these are the things that I've been struggling with. This is where I'm at. This is where I need your help. And you know, that's the one thing that's going to connect you to God quickly because sometimes we put up this wall in front of God, like we can't tell him we're weak and we can't tell him our problems and we can't tell him how we're really feeling. We try to hold it in, but if you just let it out, you're going to receive the comfort. You're going to receive the love of God. And that's one of the ways that you return to your first love. And so the last one, we talked about this in the last uh, series that we did, and this is to reschedule time with him reschedule time with him. If you want to grow in any relationship, you spend more time with that person, right? And so this, these are four powerful ways that we can return to our first love. Ephesians, our Ephesus was a church that had solid doctrine. They had the best teachers. They had the best platform. They were the strongest church in all of Asia Minor, and they were the one that planted all these other churches. But guess what? There was still something that they could work on and that was to not forget their first love. So maybe today you find yourself tired. You find yourself overwhelmed. You don't know how you're going to get through this week. You don't know what's going to happen. I want you to just simplify things this week. I want you to just put Jesus back on the throne in your life. Put him back in that number one spot and reconnect with him, whatever it takes. Literally say no to all the things on your calendar just to say yes to Jesus this week. And as you put Jesus first, everything else is going to fall perfectly in line. And I'm believing that for you this week. <clears throat> I want to end with this. You know, um, a lot of us wonder why we were created. I don't know if you've ever thought about that before, but when I was younger, I was trying to figure out what my purpose was. I was trying to figure out, you know, why, why am I even here? What's my purpose? You know, I, I didn't know what it was. <clears throat> and for so long, I, I complicated it in my own life and I tried to earn that purpose. I tried to work hard to get something. And um, Jesus, over the past 10 years in my own life, has been working uh, on me and just making myself more God-dependent than self-dependent or God-reliant instead of self-reliant. And maybe he's doing the same thing with you. But I want to share a verse with you in Revelation chapter 4. This is just a couple chapters up from where we are right now, but verse 11 of chapter 4 actually tells us why we were created. And this is the one reason you were created. There's a lot of uh, smaller reasons why you were created, but this is the ultimate reason why you were created. And this is the message that the church of Ephesus needed to hear. This is the message that I need to hear today. This is the message that you need to hear today. And it says this in the King James Version, For thou hast created all things, and this is the reason why, for thy pleasure they are and were created. For thy pleasure. God didn't create you so you could go do a bunch of cool stuff. God created you for his pleasure. He created you because he loves you. And this week, I want you to remember that. I am loved by God and I am created to have pleasure in God. Uh, the Catechism of 1818, this is when a bunch of religious scholars got together. This is all the smart people that went to seminary 
uh, they got together and they tried to figure out, they're like, what's the purpose for what we were, why were we created? You know, it's like, what's the whole goal of this thing? And they came out with just one, one simple sentence. They said, we were created for, to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. That's what they came up with. These are the smartest people in the world as far as, you know, religion and, and Christianity and whatever else. But they came together and they said to glorify God, and enjoy him forever. That's literally the purpose of life. And so I wanted to share that with you, that, that loving God and being loved by God is the first priority. That's literally why you're created. Why does a parent have a child? Is it so that they can have more manual labor around the house? No, it's gonna take extra work to raise a child, but it's because of that joy and that pleasure. So I wanna remind you today, there's four ways that we can return to that first love. And maybe there's some ways that the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you today. So take some time and pray about it. But just four ways that I could give you that might help. Number one is to recount your blessings. The second one is to recall his character. The third one is to reveal your heart. And the fourth one is to reschedule time with him. I used to be sad, but now after accepting Jesus Christ, I have peace, joy, and love. Jesus come to die on a cross to give me a brand new start. Now he is with me and I am not alone. I want everyone to know God. He changed my life and he can change yours too. Jesus loves you. Well, friends, today you may be asking yourself, how do I start a relationship with God? Well, today I wanna to share with you the four steps to knowing God. So number one is love, number two is sin, number three is Jesus, and lastly, number four is pray. So let's go through the first one together, love. Number one, God loves you so much. He says this in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him shall not die, but have eternal life. Well, number two is sin. You see, sin separates us from God. This is the bad news. And it says that the effects of sin in our life is death. We read about this in Romans 3.23. It says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And it also says in Romans 6.23 that the wages of sin is death. You know, sin is like a barrier between us and God. God can't hear our prayers. We can't have a relationship with God because of sin. And sin is all the bad things we've done in life. But here's the good news, and this comes right after this verse. For the wages of sin is death, but then it says, but the, the, the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 6, 23. So the, the good news is number three, Jesus. Jesus came to die on a cross for you. He came to die for all of your sins, your past, your present, and even your future sins can be forgiven. You know, it's a free gift because we don't have to work our way to heaven. Let me say that again. You don't have to work your way to heaven. You don't have to work your way to salvation. Salvation is not based on your good works. It's based on what Jesus did for you. And so that's number three, Jesus. So how do you receive Jesus? How do you receive his forgiveness? How do you receive his love, hope, and peace in your life today? Well, that brings us to our last step. Number four is to pray. We can pray to receive God's grace in our life. So let's pray right now, wherever you're at, let's bow our heads together and let's pray to invite Jesus to come into our life. So dear God, I thank you so much that you sent Jesus to die for me. God, I confess that I am a sinner and in need of a savior. And I believe that Jesus Christ went to the cross and died for me. I ask right now that, that you would forgive me of all my sins, my past, my present, and even my future sins. May they be forgiven through the blood of Jesus. And I put all my faith and trust in Jesus today. And I ask that you'd fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to live for you every day of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, my friends. Well, if you prayed that prayer, I wanna say, welcome to the family of God. Your sins have been forgiven. You have a purpose for living and a home in heaven. God bless. I wanna share Jesus with people, but it's hard to share Jesus because we live in a digital age. Everyone's on their phone and online. It's so hard to share the gospel in person. Linku.co gives me the ability to share Jesus with anyone and everyone, 24 seven, right from my phone. I created my own personal Jesus link, and now I can reach the world and see my impact daily. The best part is I don't have to create my own gospel. I can install gospel presentations from one of my favorite ministries. Today, I'm reaching TikTok, 
Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and more. I've already shared Jesus with a thousand people today and saw 16 people say yes to Jesus. I am so excited because now I have a ministry of my own and God is moving through my life. If you know anyone who wants to share Jesus, tell them to get their link, linkyou.co. Here at One Billion, we want to pray for you. We know that there's many things that you go through during the week and you know there's just so many different stressors that are on us right now during these crazy times. But we know that with God, all things are possible. That's what the Bible says, all things are possible. You know, a lot of people think about, you know, Jesus is like, I don't believe uh, that there can be a God. It's like, it takes greater faith actually to believe that God can't exist. But if God can create us, he can do anything, right? So let's go ahead and pray today, believing that God can do anything. There might be impossibilities in your life. Maybe some of you have terminal cancer. Maybe some of you have something that's inoperable. Maybe some of you are going through a relationship problem that is definitely gonna end in a breakup. But I wanna pray today because I know that God can do all things. There's nothing my God can't do. And I know that he is gonna come through for you. So let's go ahead and pray today. Go ahead and, and bow your head and close your eyes with me and let's, <clears throat> let's petition God for your needs and the things that are going on in your life today. So Jesus, we thank you that with you nothing is impossible. There is not one mountain you can't move in faith. And God, we want to come to you today saying that we know you can do miracles. We know you can do all things. There is nothing that is off limits in our life from you. So God, today, I just pray over my brothers and sisters that are coming with a heavy heart, that are feeling like, I can't keep going anymore. I feel like this is the end. I am at the end of my rope. God, I just pray that your strength would sustain them. Your word says that when we are weak, you have the strength to show up and you have the strength to be strong for us. So God, we just give you that place today, that place in our heart that wants to give up, that place in us that says we can't keep going and we want to surrender that to your goodness. We want to surrender that to your love. And Jesus, we thank you that you care about every detail of our lives. And for anybody that's feeling pain in their bodies, maybe you have um, some sort of a disease that is uh, uncurable or um, an immunodeficiency or something that lasts for a long time where, where the doctors say, you know what, this isn't going to get any better and it's just about treatment. Uh, we just want to come against that today, Lord, and we just want to pray for your perfect healing. We pray for miracles. We pray for uh, testimonies that would just rock this world, that people would be able to be healed and be able to share these amazing things that you've done to bring healing and faith to others. And Jesus, we know that whenever you were walking this earth, you always touched the people. You always healed people. You always looked to their pain and gave them your comfort and your strength. So God, we're asking for that today. We ask that you would just come by your Holy Spirit and touch your people right now exactly where they need it. We pray over cancer. We pray over inoperable uh, things that are going on and curable diseases <clears throat> right now. And we pray for healing in the name of Jesus. We pray over all depression, all anxiety, all loneliness. And God, I declare your power and a sound mind over it. Thank you, Lord that we are your children and that you care about us. I ask that you would just meet your kids where they are today. In Jesus' name, amen. Will God bless you this week. Before I received Jesus in my life as my savior, my life used to be sad, emptiness, feeling unloved, and broken life. I live in condemnation because the curse of witchcraft in my family. But now after accepting Jesus Christ, I have peace, joy, and love. Jesus came to die on a cross to give me a new brand new start. Jesus loves you. Unreached people are those who have never heard the name of Jesus or made a Christian. They live in closed countries where Christianity is persecuted. Does this make them impossible to reach? Now with OneBilly.org, you can reach cross borders and reach people's hearts through mobile phones. 
and you don't even have to leave your home. It's simple. Chat with a 1 billion.org team member today and customize your global outreach. You can even pick the country too. I want to share with you some amazing things that are happening all over the world. You know, we live in the greatest time and revival is happening all over the world and, you know, people are getting saved in every nation around the world. And, you know, we share Christ uh, every day on mobile phones, but about 175 people give their life to Jesus daily um, through, through our outreaches. And I want to share with you uh, some of these testimonies. It says, a woman from Myanmar says, hi, I just received Jesus Christ today in my life and I want to learn about Jesus. Well, praise God for you for making that decision to follow Jesus. And we also have a woman from Nicaragua. She says, yes, I have recommitted my life to Jesus Christ. Pray for my life. Well, we'll be praying for you. And as a one billion family all over the world, we'll be praying for you today, um, you know, that you will grow closer to, in your relationship with God. We also have a woman from Bhutan. She says, I want to start a Bible study. Uh, guide me and teach me about Jesus Christ. Well, we'll be sending you some information about how you can start a Bible study today. We also have a man from Toga. He says, pray for me. Um, I think I'm totally lost of what God has planned for me to do, and I feel that I am far from my purpose. Pray for me. Well, to that man at Toga, we're gonna be praying for you as a family that you, God will reveal his purpose for your life. And we also have another man from Nigeria. I wanna start a Bible group. I, I want always to be conscious of God, Jesus Christ, uh, and what He's done for me, and I want to grow spiritually. Well, we'll be sending you some more Bible study material your way so you can start that Bible study, and we pray that that Bible study will explode all over Nigeria. And lastly, we have a woman from Sri Lanka. She said, I just received Jesus Christ. I am born Buddhist, but I like to learn about Christianity. Help me. Pray for me. Thanks in advance. Well, we'll be praying for you. You know, uh, we're so glad that you made it out of Buddhism because Buddhism is not the way and Jesus is the way. So we praise God for you. So friends, this is amazing miracles that are taking place around the world. You know, this, this month alone, we shared the gospel with 800,000 people and eight, to 800,000 people and 26 million people saw our commercials. 5,208 people gave their lives to Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we want to thank you so much for all that God is doing and we're thankful for you to be a part of this amazing movement. All the time I was looking for meaning, but I didn't understand who I was or why I was living. I felt lost. Then I decided to trust God. He changed me and gave me a new life where there is joy and peace. Jesus Christ died for me and took all my mistakes to the cross. Now I know He is always with me and He knows all of my worries. I am not alone. All right, as we wrap up today, we hope that you've experienced God's power and presence in your life today. And you know, we're gonna, we're gonna close with this, is that here at One Billion, our passion is to help you. And that's why we call this last part, you, because we believe that God has given you a ministry and we wanna equip you and train you for that ministry. So we have some websites that we wanna use to help train you. One of these websites is called the7steps.org. This is a discipleship website. So if you wanna learn the basics of Christianity, go to the7steps.org. Another website we have if you need prayer, it's called onebillion.org backslash prayer. We have a prayer team that wants to pray for you. Another, another website we have is if you wanna be, if you wanna share your faith and become a digital missionary online, you can, sharing a link, a gospel link. It's called linku.co and you can share the gospel through social media, it's amazing. Uh, we also want you to share your testimony. God's given you a testimony to share. At JesusViral.com, you can upload your faith story of how you came to Christ. We also have another website, NoPeace.org. This website is, covers the four steps of the gospel that we talked about. If you want to learn those four steps, go to NoPeace.org. You can also share the, those links with your friends as well. NoPeace.org is our gospel site. We also have another site called Meet Christians. This is a new Christian website we're building. Uh, it's where you can meet Christians from all over the world by putting your pen on a map. And then lastly, this is the most exciting news ever. 
Our Sunday services are broadcasted every Sunday around the world. Check out 1billion.org backslash live. This is a service you don't want to miss out on. It's going to truly bless your life and you're going to hear God's word and, and get encouraged. So thank you to you so much for watching 1billion.org. We pray that this ministry has blessed your life today. And before you go, let me pray for you. Dear God, I thank you so much for my brothers and sisters around the world who are watching today. We pray that you would be with them. We pray that they can feel your presence. We pray that you would fill them with strength and power and God protect them. We pray that you would use them as a witness to all nations and to the people that they are around every day. God, thank you for them. Bless them, empower them, encourage them, and may they go in your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, amen, my friends. Be blessed and know this, that God is with you, he's for you, and he loves you. You and I are living in the biggest communication shift in 2,000 years. Amazon has no stores. Uber owns almost no cars. Facebook creates no content. Airbnb owns no real estate. And Netflix is not a TV channel. The way people hear about Jesus is also changing too. OneBillion.org is on the cutting edge of delivering Jesus to the masses through social media and smartphones. Its plan is to give every person on earth in every nation an opportunity to come to Jesus right on their smartphone. And we also want to do it one billion times. Think about it. We want to share Jesus with one billion people. OneBillion.org has been paid for by ministry partners like you. If you'd like to be a part of the ministry and join us as a partner, you can at OneBillion.org. And you can see lives impacted by our program. God bless you.